All right. Yeah. All right. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to this first version of Love City Live. I'm Andre in the flow, and I'm joined by Jamari Johnson Williams. Hey there. How you doing? How's it going? <laughs> Good, good, good. Um, I'm going to give viewers a chance to come into this space. This is an opportunity for us to like check our technology and make sure that things are working properly. Um, I've never used anything like this before. Oh, it, it is it's live now. Oh, there we are. This is, oh, I'm going to turn this down so I don't get any feedback. Um, and... I'm going to share this across a few spaces. And even if we don't get any uh, viewers, we're just going to have a fun time all the same because Hello. that's what we do. Period. It's what we did. It's what we did in Virginia. It's what we did in a boat. It's what we did in a moat. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So now I'm supposed to be able to share this somehow. Um, let me go over to the social and hit up my page for Love City Arts and go to the page and where are you? Where are you, lady? Thank you so much for being on, Jamari. Like, you're one of my favorite people. Thank you for having me. <laughs> talking about favorite people. Talking about favorite voices. Don't. don't what you won't do in here is... <laughs> Don't act like you don't know, because I know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. All right, I'm sharing it. I'm sharing it. Okay. I'm going to go into my spiel here. Give me, like, 30 seconds, everybody. We'll see what happens, okay? So, basically, I wanted to try something new. I wanted to really, really engage with the community that is Love City. Love City, I think it's such a beautiful place because... Well, here, I got notes about what we are. Uh, Love City Arts Collective is an all-inclusive art service organization. The collective is also an artistic home to New York City-based artists. These artists seek to give their gifts back to the community in the service of love. We make music. We share resources through workshops, classes, blog posts, podcasts, and giveaways, and community organizing. And we also gather to hold space uh, through music, art, and the spoken word. And the mission is basically to heal and empower artists and community through renewal and transformation. Praise God. Praise, praise, praise. Uh, and so hopefully you hear something today, everybody, from Jamari and myself that, that uplifts you. Six years ago, seven years ago when I moved to New York City, I used to sit in my bedroom and be so sad because I didn't know where my people were. All I knew was Ripley Greer. And good old Pearl Studios, Pearl 505, Pearl 519. Where they had literally taken shits on the floor over there. <laughs> I'm out. So if, you're, if your life was literally encountering that and then going home and not having anybody to like giggle and chop it up with, it could be really, really, it could be really, really a sad place. So New York. Um, I see we've got one viewer that's here. So if you are, uh, I don't know who the viewer is and I don't know how to see it. So please leave us a comment. We've got two viewers. Leave us a comment and let us know who you are in this space um, as we talk about uh, Ripley Greer uh, and all of the shenanigans. And also give us a thumbs up if you're here so that we can know. Um, that you're in the space. Um, yeah, so if that's all you have to look forward to, then it could get really, really sad. So I created Love City Arts in order to allow people to have a home, either online or in New York City, where we're not going to judge you, we're not going to come for you, we're not going to give you a hard time about being, you know, extra, because artists are extra. Always. Always extra. So, like, I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is. So... Anyway, oh, India's here. Hey, India. How you doing? Uh, India is the social media coordinator for Love City Arts, and we, we love her and her support. And um, if she hangs around for long enough, we could probably um, invite her on into the party. Um, let's see. What else am I supposed to be doing here? Uh, yeah, we're a live space. So now's the opportunity for people who are viewing to share if they want to. And just know that later on in this episode, if you want to jump in and ask questions, you can chat and comment those um, below in your Facebook Live. And also, if you want to come on, 
um, to see, to, you know, to see and be seen will also offer, offer that opportunity. Um, how do we check? Com this is my first time doing this. So let me see how we check comments here. Hey, boo. Hey, boo. I see you, India. Great. All right. So Jamari Johnson Williams is on. He and I met each other in Virginia. I was literally being his little at the time. <laughs> like, I got the opportunity to under, um, not understudy, what do you call it? Cover, swing. That's those, swing. those swinging days. All. all the parts. And one thing I loved about Jamari was that no matter what was going on, we were doing like marathon shows and like six, seven shows a day, and like you know, pan, pan exactly. No matter what was going on in the campus and around, this guy had a love for art and a, and like a fire in him. He loved to laugh. I'm talking about you, like you're not even here. You love to laugh and uh, share, and you always brought the noise and the funk to the stage. Um, can dance his ass off, can sing his ass off, like, and um, and it's just a wonderful, and gives the best hug. So, you know, anyway, I've said what I feel about you. What do you feel about you? <sighs> who are, a lot of things. Uh, like, who are you as an artist? Like, what, I mean, like, what are you trying to put out into the world? I guess is my question. Everything in a mama. I mean, I like to okay. identify as a renaissance man, if you will. Okay. Do it all. Yeah. I like to do it all. Yes. Well, um, when you say do it all, what do those things look like? Like where, where do you, cause you, you went to AMDA, right? I did. Okay. And what was that experience like for you? That was two long years, honey, of strict, conservatory training um yeah. they had us in there twirling they had us in there singing they had us in there crying they had us in there laughing doing all the things um and it was definitely an invaluable experience you know it was between that or the good old nyu actually okay and am to prove to be the better choice no where uh, of course of course i don't know much about it like how many kids are rolling through the program at one time we had one of the biggest classes i swear it was like uh, 300 i might be making the number up, but like in a, in a, an insane an insane amount of that was the uh, uh, uh 2012 fall 2012 we had an insane amount and just about almost every single one of them dropped out no, no. See, I'm thinking that AMD is one of those schools, like fame school, where there's like 32 kids twirling around and like. I mean, yes. I mean, <laughs> but you know, it's it, it it's hard. It's strict training. You can, you aren't allowed to audition uh, while you're um, attending the school. Like they want they want to mold you and put you out in the world. Okay. Okay. So roll me back to where are you from originally? Because I don't, I don't know your origin story. Absolutely, Gifford, Florida. You from where? Gifford. Uh, <laughs> were, were there, were there uh, crocodiles r running down the Plenty. street? Plenty. No, I was expecting you to say no. It's not like that. No, it's uh, like that. We got crocodiles. We got armadillos. We got foxes. Whatever you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So take me back to your senior year. Were you were, were you active in in high school drama and arts and things like that? Yes, um, I was a little bit of a late bloomer to the theater scene. I mm -hmm. transferred to the good old Saint Edward School and giving them, you know, just giving them a little shout out. Okay, um, shout out, shout out, shout out. Yeah. That's all. Let me give them um, better light. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that me transferring to that private school. And having the choice to take up uh, different arts that I might not have been afforded at different schools really, really, really changed my life. And I discovered I had a knack for it and discovered I actually loved it. Cool, cool, cool. And so you said it was between NYU and AMDA and you decided to go to AMDA. It's cheaper, more of a place you wanted to be. And you went through that whole process. And then after, what happened for you? Uh, they chewed us up and spit us out i graduated in uh spring 2014 and just started working started working 
Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, like I said, I, I can tell that you really, really, really love what you do. Like it, it's like you come alive like a, like a Christmas tree. <laughs> okay, so beyond beyond just being on stage and being under the lights and you know all that goes along with that, um, one creative to another, I, I know what that feeling is like. Like why? Tell me the wh- why do you do what you do? I almost can't put it to the words. It's it's a it's really a feeling. Um, and I'll tell you the first time. And I'll tell you the first time I felt that feeling. And it's almost like chasing the dragon, if you will. Mm-hmm. The first show I ever did at the good old Saint Edwards in the Wax Lights Performing Arts Center, honey, uh, okay. was Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, and my amazing, amazing director and now friend Jennifer Patty cast me as Audrey too. And you know, back in that day, I was uh, excruciatingly shy. I could barely talk to people, barely look people in the eye. I was just like, no, 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 don't look at me. So it was the, and she saw something in me and it was the perfect, it was the perfect segue. Cause you know, it's, he's just the voice. Mm. Uh, and you know, the man eating plants just like chomping away at people. Um, so I got to hide behind, you know, a veil and still put myself forward. Uh, and then at the end, at the very end, during the curtain call, they allowed me to crawl on through and the plant would open and I popped right out. And I'll never forget, I think it was closing night and closing night, freshman year of high school. Um, and for some reason, for some reason, because I was backstage, so I didn't have a costume. So I took myself into our little uh, costume shop, put on a full tuxedo. A full, a full black and white tuxedo, and yell, and for some reason, yellow socks, just because. Um, <laughs> Makes total know, sense to me. Yes, I, yes, yes. And I remember, and it was the first, mind you, it was the first first time I'd done anything like this. Um, first time I was really singing in front of people. It was bananas, bananas, bananas. You, you would have never guessed. Mm, um, mm. And the last night. I popped out of the plant as, as I had done two times before and was just greeted with just this standing ovation, just this warmth, this uh, reassurance, however many words you can say, it was just, just swelled over me. Uh, and I, I can, I don't even know how to describe it. I just, yeah. I loved, I loved that. I loved being seen i loved being i loved expressing myself and that being accepted and i wanted to feel that forever i loved it i fell in love with yeah what does it mean for you to be seen because i think one of the things um and you know I, i go i go off book sometimes um you know for us as artists we we are under the lights and we're often on zero in the center of the stage. Um, and we can be seen. It's really weird that you can be seen by all of your audience members, but then not be seen in some areas of your life at the same time, exactly. you know, or, you know, when, you know, cause there's no everlasting gobstopper of a contract. So when it, when it's over, it's over. Like, what do you, what do you do? How do you navigate that space of being seen and not being seen? Barely. <laughs> Honestly, barely. Um, and I and I guess that's maybe that's why we keep doing it, just chasing that feeling. Um, but also, just brings it brings me joy. I and nothing, nothing brings me more joy. I, I don't know. Yeah. I just, I just yeah. really love it. And I hate when everything it, else. <laughs> and I, I love it so much and I hate everything else. I, it's really hard. It is really hard as artists to go to these day jobs and to make these ducats and make ends meet when you know, like, and I feel like it's like this, like, superpower that I have. I always tell people that, like, singing is my Superman thing and, like, uh-huh. And then doing all those other jobs is like my Clark Kent stuff. And I just sit there sometimes like, if you motherfuckers only knew. If you knew. If you knew I was about to jump off this table. It's the flips. <laughs> like, it just, it just let have. Let have. Speaking of which, have you have you been doing splits like that since you were a kid? Were you a child? You said you were a late bloomer. No. Because for those of you who can't see, you can go to like our Love City Art social media or go to uh, Jamari's Jamari Dabis on Instagram. You can go to social media. He's built like a football player, 
a butt that's can, what I did, honey. But can twirl. Oh, di- oh, okay. So now, like, uh, well, I was original. I'm, I'm literally like the quintessential like high school musical story. I swear to God, um, just jockey, jock, jock. But I also did so many things. I mean, music wasn't anything new because I also played instruments. Uh, what instruments? I play primarily the violin and tuba, but you know, also dabbled in the viola, the cello. I know how a piano works. I play. I some see you, piano. young, gifted, and black. <laughs> I told you everything. I, I did everything. Uh, so music was so music wasn't a stranger to me, but as far as using my voice as an instrument, that was I discovered that much later on in life. Um, so it was instruments and sports and mm, that main sport was football state champion junior year the the whole crocodile state yes god <laughs> <That one. laughs> oh my god oh my goodness I, I love it i love it so yeah you do come from a lot of different backgrounds i mean what would you say to someone that's watching that may be scared of kind of stepping out their comfort zone and moving into like a different area do do it Period. Don't listen to any of those outside forces because I did that for the longest time. I spent most of my high school experience just like battling between football and theater, especially because they take up so much of your time. And football is a year round sport. Don't be fooled. Um, And it just got to the I mean, I do have a whole I do have a whole I do have a definite date where I like shut down. football for good because i just literally had to choose but it was a whole it was a whole battle um and i just had to dig deep inside myself and really figure out which of the two i loved because unfortunately i couldn't do both anymore and i chose the arts yeah yeah, uh, and a lot, a lot of people don't realize that like we we choose the art the art chooses us it's this Hello. huge like big big embrace and we're um, not incur and we're not incur and that's not the that's not encouraged because i mean they people might celebrate me now but trust and believe when i finally quit the football team my senior year and whatnot um as much as my teammates loved me and i love them borderline borderline bullied like if we re- if we really want to talk about let's, no, let's, let's talk about it talk to me anymore if we really want to dive into it let's do it because i'll tell you it was uh, it was literally my junior year. Um, spilling all the tea right now. So literally my junior year, uh, we were at football practice. We were probably like, I don't know, three games away from winning the championship. Our coaches are going ham. I'm mind you, half because because of the way my school was set up. You know, like a fourth of the team was also you know in the school was also in the school musical, and the musical that year was uh, Little Women. And wait, they sing in Little Women, not to derail your story, but they sing. No, good, yes, they do. Okay, keep going, keep going. Um, and I was Cassis Rodrigo, uh, one of the superheroes in uh, Joe's story, the main sister in her story. Um, uh, you know, well, I was gonna say small part, but that's wrong, there's no such thing as small parts. Come on, but a valiant part when a beautiful blue shirt that I had and a nice little like long I don't even know what you would call it like Zorro type hat it was amazing okay um, so we'd like do football practice we'd do like three fourths of football practice then something then we'd leave a little early so we could catch Jenner and then you know go into tech and whatnot it was tech week and <sighs> you know because we were so close to the championship I had you know it got to the point where I had to like you know bug my coach it's like hey is it um is it time to go because you know deep deep down inside I knew that's where I really wanted to be but you know I did everything um, like a crazy person. Um, and I just remember one day, you know, here comes, here comes little, little Jermaine, like, hi coach. Uh, is it about that time? Can we, can we leave that? Can we leave yet? And he like flat out said, no. He knew where you wanted to go. Do you know where you wanted to go? Oh, absolutely. They literally, my, my director and my coaches literally worked out a whole agreement, worked out this agreement um, because there were so many players that were also in the show and whatnot. Like, this was set in stone, all these things. Um, and one day he was just like, no, you're not going anywhere. And I was devastated. 
I didn't know what to do. I, I stayed because I was young and naive. Um, and I just, and, and I, I don't know, that, fe- that, that feeling just felt so terrible. It's like, it just like ripped my soul out of me. And I, and at that moment I knew, I knew at that moment that I wasn't going to go back. Like I finished out the season, yeah. got my ring, um, and then said, peace out. I'm going to do what I love that that definitely threw it in my face. It gave me no choice. Um, well, I mean, th- that's one thing I love about the universe too. Like it will often put these situations in our lives where it's kind of like, Oh, this is bringing me closer to my truth. So absolutely. even though it felt like her. And so we need to put, we need to just take a moment to put a pen in that. Like sometimes you think that these things are hurtful and that's the worst thing that could ever happen, but it, it's pushing you towards your destiny all the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of pushing you towards your destiny, what recent projects have you worked on that you're really, really proud of? Uh, ooh, ooh, I was just in a wonderful, wonderful music video by the good old Cynthia Ming. Shout out, Cynthia. How you doing, girl? Okay. Who just opened, who just opened Hades Town on the good old B-Way. Um, <laughs> amazing composer. Amazing, amazing instrumentalist as well. Um, she composed this beautiful song called Milwaukee is a Lonely Place, um, based off of her grandfather's journals when he immigrated into America. Um, and it just talks about how lonely how lonely it is just being in this foreign country, being thrust into this world, you know, prob- working, working nonstop to help your family, um, sacrificing, sacrificing everything, um, and just like, dwelling in that lonely space and you know a friend of a friend they were looking for dancers of color and friend of a friend recommended me i got the job and we put together this beautiful beautiful piece i mean i like i mean i say i, I say i'm a i say i i'm yes 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 yes, yes. see i'm down to myself Def, don't do it don't do it i am a triple threat um yeah and I, st- and I still have a hard time convincing myself that i really am a dancer even though i absolutely love it and even though you spend like a time, okay. So, okay, we re- we recently did a. I now I gotta stop because we recently oh, did a um online roundtable about imposter syndrome and those gremlins that sit on your shoulder and to this day. I mean, you're sitting here telling me about a dance like I'm a, not you, a music bo- video that is literally on YouTube right now, and I'm like, I'm not a dancer. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm and I'm like, well, what is this? What is this? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's wild. What do you think that's about? Because I I know where I know where. Perfection. Oh, for me, uh, seeking that perfection. Yeah, like uh, you think it's that artist thing that we have where um where we just want it to be our best, you know, even though, even though we're not machines. Um, we're human beings. Yeah. Does anybody else that's in this space? We got three viewers right now. Does anybody else in this space deal with that feeling of imposter syndrome? Um, like, you know, you know, like what, like, what do you do when that comes up for you? But, do, but do exactly what you just did and say, boop, knock boop, that, boop. knock that shit off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Because I mean, I, I don't get me on a soapbox, but I'm I'm of the belief that your I am statements allow the universe to bring more to you. So the more that you say, I am a singer, I am a right. dancer, I'm an artist, I'm a basket weaver, I'm a soap maker, whatever your I am is, the more that you say what your I am thing is, the more those things start running across the universe so towards true. you. It's so true. It literally rewires your brain. It literally rewires your brain. Um, and you just naturally fall into your blessings. Hello. Come on. Pass the plate, somebody. Come on. Just it's pass right the plate. There. It's yours. It, it's for, just for the ask. <laughs> Um, so another heavy question. What do you do when you get stuck? Like, okay, so let me paint you a picture. Like we're in, um, cause I know this, you were in Ripley Greer, mm-hmm. you're in there, you didn't get a good night's rest because you really, really want to put your best foot forward for this job or whatever. And you're sitting there and you're kind of in this space of like, oh gosh, I got to go in here and get these people like 20 seconds of the best that Literally. I can on this After piece of after waiting all day, like, you know, what do you, how do you, 
there's just some there's just a force and it, I, maybe it's my love for it there's just a force in me um that's just like no jamari you need you have to do this you're here this is what you love just do what you just do what you do best yeah i'm a crazy person like no matter what how i'm feeling i mean child i'm not gonna go into what's going in my what's going on in my life because we're all going through it um but you know i've I've never been the person to just like, no, I can't say it. it's never happened, but you know, I'm not the type of person to just sit at home and sulk and whatnot. I will literally set my alarm clock. I'll set six alarm clocks to make sure my ass is up. I will warm up, do all the things, drag myself down there, wait in line, um, running, running back and forth between studios. Like I, um, it's actually, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pause you there because I, I forget that people, that there are people in the world who aren't as immersed in the musical theater. True. Could you, could you run um, our viewers and the replay viewers through what a typical day in the life for, um, cause everybody sees when you take that bow, everyone sees when you're on that exactly. stage, you know, and, and someone, um, Someone, there's going to be a uh, a podcast episode and a television show episode that's coming out that's going to come out soon from Talia Gurdin. She talks about you only know my glory, you don't know my story. Exactly. And so, can you tell us about the story? Like, what is a typical day like in the day of a um, musical theater, New York based musical theater actor? Go. Let me. Okay, so typical day peak of audition season, Jamari Johnson Williams is probably waking up at 5 a.m. Um, who knows when I fell asleep? Who knows? Um, guarantee you it's after 12 p.m. After 12 in the morning uh, because I'm a vampire. I'm waking up at 5. I'm hopping in the shower. I'm warming, I'm warming up. I'm attempting to eat whatever food I have, shoving coffee in my face, putting on whatever outfit I feel like wearing that day, um, something bright and colorful, uh, packing my bag full of maybe a pair, a change of clothes, all of my dance shoes, all of my dance clothes, my whole book full of 350 billion songs. I'm sitting on, I'm sitting on the shitty, shitty MTA, literally steaming my voice with my, with my new steamer. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm the viewers are gonna hate me because I, I no, just like you. One of those bougie people that has now uh, I is <laughs> because because it works. Um, you know. I, oh really? I, I did me a little. Uh, it wasn't. It went always that way. I just I once I did Riverside, which paid me lots and lots of money. Hallelujah! And I was able to afford. I was able to afford to get me a little fancy steamer. Um, changed the whole game for me. Um, and now I'm literally like on the subway right before I go in the room. Is it battery powered? Um, yes, it is. And All right, we, we can geek out about singer shit later. Okay, so you're on the track. Oh, yeah. Do you better believe I I'm going to be in those DMs? Like, because that's that's a Celine Dion shit. Like, Hello? that's really like. No. I swear to God, it'll change your life. But we're oh, okay, 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 go, go, go. Okay, uh, so you're on the train. Go, go, go. So, <laughs> we're, tr we're, we're, tr we're trying to get out the door at 6 a.m. because, um, you, you know, a couple a couple months ago, I was non-equity, which meant I had to, you know, beat the 500 other people trying to also sign up to get seen at these equity and or non-equity auditions. Um, yeah. Multiple, multiple in a day, and probably in three different studios, mind you. So we're running in the morning. It's not even seven a.m. Um, we get down to we get down to you know Penn Station 30, 34, 35, 36, and then we wait in the cold, honey, until they let us in because we're not even allowed in the building yet. We're signing up on all these lists, and then we disappear for a couple of hours until the call actually starts. That was that was always the roughest part for me because I'm like, what am I supposed? Especially like in the winter, I'm like, am I supposed to like wander these New York streets? It's like freezing, and we're and and I'm like number 25 in line to sign up it's bananas it's bananas what what we what we actually have to do it's in almost inhumane um yeah 
Yeah. Okay, so keep going. So you yeah, wander yeah. you wander in these vagabond shoes. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> wander the streets of New York. You go find a Starbucks. You try to, like, busy Dug yourself. In wherever. Uh, and oftentimes, you're miles and miles away from the house. Like, when oh, I... Trust me, like, no, I have my whole life with me. There's no going home. There's right. no going home. Because you won't... Because you'll lose your spot, and then you just wasted your time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so you finally get into the building. You're in the building. You're number 25. What's happening then? I'm asking you like I don't know, but what's what's happening Absolutely. then? Absolutely. Um, if it's an equity audition, um, your ass is tossed to the side because you are not that, and they will see all those people first. And then when the creative team rolls in two minutes before the call starts, they decide if they're going to actually let you audition or not. And, you know, sometimes they say thank you very much because there's probably just as because there's just as blah, 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 blah. just as many as there's like 500 people 500 non-equity there's twice that many equity um and if they don't think they have time and if they if they want to take their sweet time on day then that's it you go yeah home. that's it yeah okay well let's just say that you do get the golden ticket and you Indeed. do and, and you do get to go okay you get to go and they they what happens then you wait hurry up and wait that's that's what everybody that's the big old catchphrase that's what everybody's saying you hurry up and wait you sit there um if it's a singer call you know you're trying to keep that voice warm you're trying to decide what you're gonna sing you're preparing well i mean well, now you have your celine dion personal like are, are you wait are you wait, wait are you misting in the room no well, well yes i'm not even oh. yes <laughs> We got to go up for something. It wasn't always we, that way. Sometimes you literally just, sometimes I, it literally was just like, God, what's Jesus? Oh, you, were you grabbing, you're literally grabbing the spit in the back of your throat Absolutely. that's left and being like, please touch me with a bit please. of moisture so that I can hit this, whatever the note. You're trying to heat up a cup of water, like something. Oh, man. Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> so, <A> lemon, please. <laughs> <laughs> so you get into the room and then what happens? You got about you got about two minutes to convince these strangers that you are that bitch, that you that they want you, that you are just so amazing that they're willing to pay you hundreds and hundreds of dollars to sing and dance and shuck and jive and do all the things. You like that's all you get. Sometimes it's not even that long. Sometimes it could be like these sixteen bars. These sixteen bar cuts could be thirty seconds. Like ma, bloop. Thank you. The end. You just spent all day. You've you've been waiting. You've been waiting since 10 a.m. It is now 3.30 when you finally get into the room and they mm -hmm. say, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Dance call. That's not even, we're not even into dance calls. Dance calls, child, you're more likely to get seen, but um, you're, you know, you're competing with Cindy Lou, whose leg is over here. Okay. And you're competing <laughs> with Fitzgerald, um, whose leg is over here. And oh my god, oh my god, you're warming uh, up. <laughs> Go ahead. We, 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 I was gonna say, we have three viewers in the room right now. If you are an auditioning type of performer type, please feel free to leave a comment down below yeah. about how you feel about this process. It's wild. Yeah. I remember the one, the I can never forget this, Jamari. One time I was in there for about like five or six hours, um, and then they Sounds decided. And then they decided they weren't gonna they weren't going to see everybody anymore. They were in a typecast. So we went in and we got typecast. They were like number one, seven, and thirteen. You can stay all the rest of y'all. This is a room full of people. <laughs> all of y'all go home. But this is what they did. This is what they did, and I will never forget it. And I'm like, and we, we, this will be a perfect segue for what I want to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. They came out with all the headshots. They were like, for those of you who are staying, feel free to stay. For those um, who aren't, hear your headshots. Reuse awesome, them. And, it, and they tossed them across the table. And I was like, these are, and we've seen this time and time. I've seen it many times since. So I, was like, but I, was, I was newly here, um, newly to the scene. And I was just like, let me just, 
get my headshot on Truly, the Truly, the one that 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 headshot that I paid money for. That I literally paid money for, and I just remember like the, that. There are spaces where we are completely humanized, and then there are spaces where we're not humanized. And so I, I mean, I don't know if you have a, a spiritual practice or a therapy practice or anything like that. I'm not trying to get in your business, but like, what are you using to keep your heart? Like, I don't ask, I don't ask artists anymore. How are you? I ask them, how's your heart? Right. Mm. Honestly, I think I rely on my friends, on my family, um, some other things that maybe we ain't, who maybe we don't have to talk about right now. You know, we all we all have our coping mechanisms. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, a, pleth- a plethora of things. I'm just constantly trying to inundate myself with something, something reassuring. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll go home and sing a little song i know i've definitely like i've definitely like run from an audition um uh defeated and like gone home and just like went on the youtube and just sang my favorite song and then left it at that you know there's there can be there can be so many things but you but you need something yeah you have you have to have which what's your go-to jam Ooh, I mean, honestly, anything. Um, of course, any musical theater song, uh, whatever's on my Spotify mm-hmm. that week. Mm-hmm. Um, but look, I want to hold you. I want to know what the song is. What is the song? <sighs> What's the bop right now? Right now, what am I listening to right now? Is it's constantly changing because I'm constantly inundating myself with new music and mm-hmm. music, constantly trying to learn, constantly growing, constantly learning. Um, I literally found myself singing um, uh, Green Finch and Leonard Bird, believe it or not. Um, just even just now in the in the shower after having the day. Uh, what Green fin- Who? Green Finch and Leonard Bird from Sweeney Todd. Oh, okay. okay. Let's see. Yes, indeed. I, yes, look, indeed. you just pull, take my musical theater card. Just take it away from me. I take got it away from me. Speaking speaking of musical theater, um, we have a question from India Chanel Duff. Okay, she says, if you were approached by someone of color that was deciding on whether or not they want to pursue the musical theater career, what advice would you give them? Prepare, be prepared. (laughs) Because the, I mean, it's the same. It's the same as any other job in America, honey. We we have to work twice as hard to get half as much. Period. Period. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've, because you know what I what I physically present might not necessarily what comes out of my mouth. Um, I have more of a legit classical sound and tone to myself. So you know I like to. So you know so I love to sing Sweeney Todd. I love to sing Company. Um, uh, 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 the Beast and Beauty and the Beast is one of my dream roles. You know, I can. Oh I, my goodness! That's, that's literally my. That's actually my go-to sixteen bars. Is if I can't love her, I can sing the fuck out of it. I know that for a fact. Yeah, and, and um, evermore. My God, ask me if I've ever been, even like, ask me how many times I've been kept for Beauty and the Beast. I can count on one hand. You because, know, because of the POC dynamic. Yes, God. They don't. Yeah. They, they just we. Ha- we have we spend so much time convincing these more than likely Caucasian casting directors that we even belong in the space. We have to spend half the time convincing them that we even even belong there and changing their mind because they're just because they're just straight up not trained. You know, um, these programs are te- are te- aren't teaching these people. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm. In, my mind is going faster than my brain. Uh, take your time. Take I'm your there. time. My mind is going faster than my brain. Faster than my mouth. Take your uh, time. I was just listening to. I don't know if you listen to um, Off Book that that podcast with Amber Mon. No, no. Kayla. Get into that. I, okay. Uh, Amber was talking about you know what black women go through in musical theater and like how these wig masters don't even can't even like understand the con- the concept of texture of hair like you know, like you 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 have a whole degree you have a whole degree and you don't know what what an afro is um oh my god i'm literally thinking like i just did hair which is 
one of one of my dream shows and one you of look great in that. you look great in that for those of you who want to see um uh, titties and <laughs> go over to his jamari the beast on instagram <laughs> don't go now because i got seven viewers i don't want y'all piecing out on me but <laughs> after the show go over to jamari the beast on instagram and he's going to give you all of the the velvety goodies <laughs> <laughs> so in hair what was happening in hair girl uh, ciao um you know, there's just so many, there's so many microaggressions. Like one, and I, and I hate to talk, and I hate to, you know, put people on blast, but well, don't know. name specific Call people, but like for but, for, know, for this one story, there's twenty that are happening indeed. somewhere. Yeah, indeed, so go on. You know, we all know what dreads are, honey. A right. dread. Um, tell me why this beautiful, beautiful, this beautiful, beautiful woman um, was forced to put on what would you call it see well, I, I already know it's gonna be so best because you said what would you, you can fill, you can literally fill in the blanks just you know you know um and, and you know nothing nothing against our caucasian viewers darling no but you know but you know when they, you know when they walk out the house you know when they attempt to do that with their hair you know just muss it up a little bit maybe throw some little product and it tease it out a little bit and just like go and it look real crazy well that's what they that's what was that's what they interpreted as a uh, the good old dread lock um i mean oh, if, wow. you, if you really want to get it was, into it, it was like a, it was like a dreadlock wig type situation i mean it was nowhere near a dread um, it was a dr- it was a dread it was dreadful um Okay, so all of this to say that there are challenge, there are challenges. Many, 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 yeah, because you know we we could go I'm, on and on about like, this. We're like diving. I'm like segueing. Okay, but but there. okay, but listen. But let's let's also be clear when we say that like dread dread or dread situations or a lack of opportunities in the space that still won't keep us from telling that that black or brown musical theater child if you need to sing, baby, sing. Sing your heart out. Do what you do what you want to do, um, because for every one hundred and two no's, somebody's going to say yes. Absolutely. We're, con- we're constantly we're constantly breaking down doors, constantly breaking windows, um, constantly breaking glass ceilings. Yes, um, we are. And more and more importantly, hey Phil, I see you. Um, Phil, hi Dawn, hi India, um, hi to all the rest of our viewers. If you're here and I didn't give you a shout out, just drop me a line down in the comments so I can see that you're here. Um, this is Love City Live, where we are just creating our. Own, that's what I'm gonna say. If you don't have, if you don't have, if you don't see the roles. If you don't see the opportunities, if you don't see that there's even a ceiling to break through, create your ceilings. And that's what we're doing here with Love City. That's what you and I are doing tonight with this conversation. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I, I would tell that kid, you know, she didn't, India didn't ask me. She asked you. But I would tell that kid, like, do what you need to do to be fully expressed. Because for some of us, this is like air, right? Absolutely. Oh. Certainly for me. Yeah, where, where, what, what's your dream role? I know actors don't like that question, but like, what's your dream? What's your dream role? What do you want to so do? Many, so many. I would love to do LG2 professionally. I've done it twice. Um, like I just said, The Beast and Beauty and the Beast, because that's just bread and butter. Um, mm-hmm. All of Sweeney Todd. You see, I'm naming all these like legit things, um, all these Sondheim musicals that yeah we get cast in um you're loud you're loud hello uh ragtime Mm -hmm. the lion king yeah it's which role in the lion king because i could i could see you doing the the mufasa track i could see you doing the um is the mufasa track absolutely simba on a good day honey (laughs) (laughs) because i feel a little I feel a little Simba Simba ish. They um they sent me in recently. My agent sent me in for this uh what was it? It's the Kaifas track in uh yes. Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> and I said that's, that's my bread. Yes, come on. That's where I am. And I said, where? <laughs> I was like, where is Jamari? Like I would have literally just like I mean, I- I would have literally. I, I, I ain't gonna say nothing real. I ain't gonna say nothing, but you know, you you might hear some. You might hear some. Uh, <gasps> some some. Oh, okay, let me shut up. Let me shut up. Let is me shut up. Zip? This is a lot. <laughs> but like, 
Oh, oh, okay. Well, we, oh my God. Okay, I'm not gonna say anything, but I think that that I I th- I think that the fact that um I think that the fact that I thought that while literally over the piano in the room, you spoke it for me. Maybe saying sp- well, you know, stay tuned to more lives where we do a follow up with Jamari about what what um. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Okay. So um. The, the next question was, what are you currently working on? But we're not talking about that. So now I'm going to open up. I want to open up more. <laughs> I want to open up the floor to our nine viewers. Are there any questions that you have? Kim, Kim uh, Dacus Wilson, who's one of our board members, is giving me is giving me eyes because, you know, if there is a teacup in the room, I'm going to find it. It just sipped. Does any of our nine viewers have a question for Jamari uh, before we um, wrap it up? It's very, it's very, very clear. Oh, I'm getting all. Co- this is very live. Who, who is calling? And you, can you hear that? Yes, I can. And the technology sounds promising. Wait, 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 wait. The technology is such. Oh, and such. Oh my goodness. What if? What if the um. <laughs> What if the technology was actually trying to get me right now? Because that sounded like a revolt to me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, any questions for Jamari? Anyone wants to come on? I'm going to actually copy on and, and over the um, the link for people to actually join us on here if they want to come on into the lobby we'll let them on to chop it up with us basically i i feel um as i ask you these last questions that this was a mission accomplished because all i want to do all i want to do is create these spaces where even if we i don't think i've seen you since 1972 like like i I think we i think we (laughs) honestly truly i don't think that what year was that Unless you have a thing with dates, I don't mind talking about dates because black don't crack. Um, but it was like it was like three or four years ago. Yes, definitely three or four years ago since I've seen you. And so, anyway, I wanted to create this space. We're going to gather weekly on Wednesday evenings. Next weekend, uh, next week it's at like nine fifteen because it's a California artist that needed to get off of work. So she's really gonna ru- she's gonna run out of work. Find a Janet a jan- uh, janitorial closet and then call into uh, Love City Live because yes. that's what we do. Hello. Um, I wanted to create a space where we can just come together weekly and just chop it up and like talk about the things that matter to us as artists this and about fantastic. and about all of the love that we have in our hearts to give. And it doesn't matter like it doesn't matter whether or not we are we, we want to be on stages, but. If we don't make it to a stage day after tomorrow, we are the stage. We create Hello. our own stages, and we we love each other in this way. Um, and thank you, thank you for creating this space for us. Just like I mean, this this is you know ther- this is therapy for me. This is this is a, a coping mechanism. Just having a commonality with someone who also identifies with his struggles and it has created this platform you're taking your time your your resources and what not to do this for so many other people that's invaluable um and so i just want to thank you oh well th- i mean i didn't i didn't mean to set the volleyball up like that i mean no no no, no. Like, like, at all. This, like this, i this said is pitching honey this th- is pitching <laughs> 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 India says, let's do it. Let's gather on Wednesdays and like, Hello. you know, when we can and just chop it up. And I want a space where there's like 10 screens and we're all just going and I talking about. I absolutely love that. Cool, cool, absolutely. cool, cool. Open invite. Come back anytime. Like I said, there's the um link down there. Anybody want to copy and paste that link and then go out and come in like the lobby's open for you. This, you know, we're recording. Um, India says, let's do it. Don. Oh, Don says, Jamari needs a love seat. So this yes, is a love seat t-shirt. I won't sit. And um, they're going to be available for sale very, very soon. Oh, you know, true. I was, I was just, I was overwhelmed. I put up a poll recently. There was the yellow and purple one, the gray and white one, and the black, the black and white one. I put up a poll recently just to say, like, choose the flagship shirt. And people were like, "When can I get one? I want the yellow and purple one." And you know, yellow and purple is my choice. Oh, is that your choice? Okay, it, it, it's, it's mine too. I mean, it. 
what what it did was, and and, the, and and Love City is a space where we can be vulnerable and talk about our feelings and be real with each other. Um, it it was like it was fun to like talk about the t-shirts and it was fun to like collaborate with Don and making the t-shirts. Don, by the way, um, runs uh Cherry. I don't want to mess this up. Cherry on top. Uh, Tees and Co. Um, she is an alumnus of the high school I went to, and we're just in separate years. I met her. They have this really cool thing, Jamari. They uh, have this tr like this trailer that you can pull behind a car or a truck that's got a full T-shirt printing set up inside, so they can roll up on like your cookout. They right, like just and these are like black-owned business. Come through um, support. Right, right. And um, I was I was at a anniversary event from my high school. I think it was like the 40th anniversary of my high school that I went to in Richmond, Virginia. I'm out there. I'm a little short shorts trying to throw it left and right. Yes. You, you, God. <laughs> and um, but I had on this tank, and then I saw this like set up across the street, and they were like, "Yeah, that's Dawn," and it's actually started by Dawn and her daughter, who also went to the school. Like they're partners in this, so it's like it's Come like a legacy. family, right? Right? Like wealth becoming wealth. So um, which I love to see. So I went over. Here's the thing, and I get chills thinking about it. Um. You know how people just give you like a, a sweet presence? Like oh, they just absolutely. have a sweet we, spirit. We all have vibrations. We all have you can sense people you can see people's aura from a bajillion miles away. Like my third eye is open. My third eye been open. Okay. Um, and I immediately tune into things. I, I went over there just looking at the shirts and seeing and trying to hear their story. It was like towards the end of the party. So things were kind of, was it towards the end of the party? That could be a lie. It may have been towards the end of the party. It was towards, look, I, I, I probably had like something in my flask. So it was, it was somewhere towards the party for me. I would have been three, four, seven in. Listen, but the, mo the moment that I approached them and started talking to them, the sweet spirits that both mom and daughter had. And we picked out a shirt. Um, it was the, um, I think it said like sexy, sweet. It was like a sex. Uh, Dawn, comment oh, below and tell me what that shirt is. <laughs> it was like sexy, sweet, something about being sexy and sweet. Anyway, it was, it was my affirmation for the day, my Hello? affirmation for life. She could tell us what it said. And um, and then immediately I would just want to give them hugs. Anyway, they have this this trailer and they run this business and I reached out to her a couple of weeks ago and asked her to help me produce these shirts to get these off the ground. And they came back in all those colors and varieties. Um, <laughs> Don says, <laughs> wait, Don says, tell it however you want to, however you remember it. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she sent these, she sent like, I, I initially just wanted one and like, like black and, and black okay so I, I want it black and white and gray and white and then in the box was the yellow and purple which was off my radar i didn't even ask for that like it was completely like not even a color combination in my mind Hello. um she sent that she also sent a shirt up about bless be the blessing like a little like hoodie for when i'm you know trying to get my body on fleek like yours I don't draw comparisons, but I'm a work in progress. <laughs> you know, and just it's just been a blessing to know Dawn and to know her family and 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 to like in, okay. to invite them and you and everyone else that's viewing um into the Love City space. Um I wasn't gonna I'll share this last story and then uh, and then I'll ask you my last three fill in the blanks that I always have for our guests um as we wind down. Um the vision of Love City Arts actually came to me when I was angry with someone mm -hmm. um, and I was mad because I felt like offended and mm -hmm. I went into a, a, a space of meditation because I was getting my namaste on Hello. and while sitting in that meditation being angry at this person um, for you know something you they know, had done it's a secondary emotion you know there's something else in there so, oh, oh okay somebody okay. else told me that come on come on doctor <laughs> Come on, tell me that. What, what, what do they mean when they say secondary emotion? Because, um, you know, anger is a is a reaction. You know, why are you angry? Are you, like, in, in whatever? And I, and I don't know why I can't remember who told me, but in that particular instance. So you're angry, angry because of because something? Because I was sad or I was oh. hurt. 
Oh I yeah, like, you're offended because of these things, you know. It's never the actual anger, right? Oh, all right, and, and psychology. He can twirl. He can dance. He can sing. <laughs> he, can, he can shrink his shit. Like I, I mean, you're right though. You're right. So I was I was hurt and disappointed and pract- and fed up, which is the reason why I was angry. I don't blame and- you. All right. And while I was sitting there in my anger, going into my meditative space, yes, son, the you. the vision we'll say it again. I said, yes, son, thank you. <laughs> well, I was saying thank you. You're trying to say thank you. I um I got this vision mm-hmm. of this actual city that was being built in the middle of a desert. We can build a beautiful city. Yes. Come on. Speaking of which, um, I'm planning a Pride concert um, for Love City. And I would love for you to come and do like your best Beauty and the Beast. Uh, ready. Okay, I'll email you. I'll email you. I'm sitting there. And in my mind, I see the vision of the city. And the city was in a heart shape. Like, it was literally in a heart shape. Like, think, like, Game of Thrones wall, but, like, in a mm-hmm. heart shape. And at the tip of the heart was a giant gate. Think Game of Thrones. How relevant. Um, and But it had one of those little doors in it where you could, like, like open and see. I'm dead. And so I opened the door. This is all happening. And I'm, I should be meditating. And this vision is, like, dropping down. And I, and I open the little door, and I see this long line of people outside the gate. Doctors, lawyers, trash collectors, bums. That was in the Emerald City. <laughs> it, it may have been. It, 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 like, it, I don't know what. I mean, I hadn't done any substances that day, so I don't know why. <laughs> all that was happening. Um, but I see this line. And one by one, people ask, can I come into the city? And I go, Sure, open the gates, come on in. And for hundreds of people in this meditative space, people came from all backgrounds and all levels of creativity and asked if they could come into the city of love and be uplifted. And when the city got at capacity, I instructed the henchmen to open, like to cut off the top, like lobe of the heart, which is graphic, like Mm -hmm. and enlarge the city. Um, And that's when I heard the words, love city a space for everyone to come and be refreshed regardless of whatever so that's the background on that um that's a word. i mean and 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 it's and it's not me it is literally you saying i said jamari would you come on and kick off this new version of the show and he said yeah yeah like i like i will I will do that like i will i, I will yes like where do you want me how do you want me like this this man deleted apps from the phone so that Without he could be so that he could so he could be well let's catch up on these comments um uh, india says yes it is a secondary emotion she receives that word um don says jamari if it's okay i will get your info to send you a shirt hot off the press um uh india says yes 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 with the clappy hands here uh don says uh and he's cute as all get out stop it <laughs> have you ever seen a brown man blush <laughs> you, you can't you can't on love city live um kim uh Dacus wilson says hope the concert will be broadcasted live of course it will be because we're really just trying to get the word out um I, you know tell tell your neighbors tell your friends tell any creatives you know about what we're building here enough about all of that though um i do three fill in the blanks i don't have them written down like i usually do so i'm gonna try to wing it off the top of my head no problem um okay here we go fill in the fill in these blanks for me Love is. I was. I'll just say what was the first word that popped into my mind. Love is everything. Love, love is everything. Love is everything. Tease it out for me. It's a great answer. Like it's enough. What does that? No. What does that mean to me? Love yeah. is kind. Love is unconditional. Love is healing. Love is you. That's the song. L- love is you literally can. love is literally everything, because all you need is love. <laughs> ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba. <laughs> yes! Joy is. Uh, uh, 
I almost just want to say Joy is. Joy is. Joy is. Like, come on, come on, tease it out for me. Uh, uh, this is literally coming to me as I speak. Um, what is Joy? Joy is being present in the moment exactly where you are and being content in that mm. Mm. joy is joy's presence joy's presence joy's presence freedom is freedom freedom is power mm. freedom freedom is power freedom I almost can't express it because you know, and that because you know, a lot a lot of times these days, uh, we don't we don't get to experience a lot of freedom. I think freedom is also um, constantly shaking, um, constantly changing. Freedom is invaluable. Freedom is invaluable. Mm-hmm. What do you think, um, this is off the cuff, what do you think happens to people when they recognize their freedom? They become their best selves. They evolve. They grow. You grow. You grow in your freedom. Um, it allow, it just, have, just having freedom, allow, yeah, allows that growth. Mm. Mm. It's mm. just because, you know, when, when the seed is planted in the earth and it breaks free, it, just, it has no choice but to grow, but to grow up into a big old tree. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Jamari, for sharing your growth process um, yeah. from, from, the, from the crocodile, and still going, from the crocodile streets of where in Florida? Gifford. G I F F O R D. Gifford. And I make sure, and I make sure to say that because um, Gifford is the town in which Vero Beach, um, you know, might try to encompass and inundate um, yeah but no i come i come from gifford florida i came from across the tracks honey you know wow wow and look at you let's you're not the, forget you in the city now you're in the, I, I i think you're doing a great job from one artist to another and from one brother to another i i think that you're doing a great great job like well, i couldn't do it without you well i love you i really do I love you all. I, I, I really do. I really do. I'm going to I'm going to do some uh some announcements now and then we'll be off. Um uh for those of you who did not catch the whole live, it's going to be available for replay on Facebook. It's also going to have uh live restreams and replays on um Periscope, YouTube and Twitter uh later in the week. This will be going out to oh, hopefully yes, read <laughs> all the land in all hey, the land. Is it on? Is it is this bitch recording? Yes, it was. It was. And you had awesome things to say. So the more people that can like can, that can stand in your light and love and joy and freedom, Jamari, the better. Um uh announcements and shameless plugs are for those who would like weekly a weekly source of accountability and check-ins. I've created a systematic approach um that's mastermind alliances. So if you want to like, you know, take yourself to the next level with accountability, check out Love City, uh, lovecityarts.org for that. Um, for those of you who would like to just be in the know about future programming, such as the one shared today, please visit lovecityarts.org. Enter the site and sign up for our um, a mailing list, our newsletter. I promise not to spam you because I often forget to even press send. Um, and then I want to say a big thank you to our donors for their financial support. As you know, like this, you know, having these really cool, you know, uh, things that allow us to see comments from our from Dawn and India and Phil and who else commented and uh, Kim having these really cool things are not free um, so thank you to our donors for helping us get the word out thank you to the team and the board of governors we have a board of governors and also an advisory board yeah because look I'm not trying to be out here making these decisions on my own you know I can't it takes a village 
these are hearts and minds of real people that I want to love on and that we want to love on. So I got to be accountable to somebody. So thank you so much to the team and board of governors and advisory boards who support and uh, are a sounding board for me to make this org the best that it can be. Um, and lastly, if you like the word of the word, if you like the word, if you like the work Hello. of Love City Arts, please spread the word. We rely on you to get the word out about what we're doing here. We're not peddling anything other than love and encouragement. Um, I think that that's a great thing. So please let your friends, family, and fellow artists know about the work if you're moved to do so. Um, thanks again, everyone. And we hope to see you next time uh, online or in person as we share the love with each other. Jamari, Thank you for being my first live um, guest. Um, thank it was you. It an honor. It was a pleasure. And we got to have you back on sometime to just chop it up. And, and you know, eventually in my mind and the way the technology can work is that the screen will just be full of artists um, just loving on each other in public spaces because we, we're worth it, right? Absolutely. All right. Any so final? Nobody tell you otherwise. I was going to say, any final words for for our viewers? I mean, you said it. We're worth it. Period. Bye, everybody. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> love you, Jamari. Love you, viewers. I love you more. All right. <laughs> Talk soon.